Happy Sunshine family, Lunacy's back here. We're taking a look at document 157 off the PACER record for the Hat J. Randall Keith Bean journey. This is the second motion for extension of time to file a post-verdict motion. All right, let's take a look at this document. United States District Court, Eastern District of Tennessee at Knoxville, the United States of America v. Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. This is number 3,17-CR-00082-002, the Honorable Thomas A. Varlin, Chief U.S. District Judge. The United States of America v. Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. The second motion of the defendant Heather Antucci Giraffe for an extension of time within which to file post-verdict motions. The defendant Heather Antucci Giraffe respectfully moves this honorable court for an additional extension of time under federal criminal, excuse me, federal rules of criminal procedure 45B1A within which to file a motion for a new trial under FRC 33 and a motion for a judgment of acquittal under FRC 29. I don't know. What, what's, the, what's the way to abbreviate this FRC? This Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure is what it stands for. FR CRIMP. I'll just say FRC. In support of this motion, undersigned counsel for the moving defendant states that due to an administrative error for which undersigned counsel is responsible, so this is talking about Francis Lloyd, uh, made an administrative error and he's responsible, a delay in the court's processing for this defendant's application for a voucher for the trial transcript occurred. A lot of passive voice in here. Counsel is advised that 30 days or more will be needed for the preparation of the transcript, after which additional time will be needed for review of the transcript and for the preparation of the FRC 33 and 29 motions for which the transcript is needed. <clears throat> FRC 45B1A authorizes the extension of time sought for good cause on a party's motion made before the previously extended time expires. The court previously extended the time for filing a motion or motions under FRC 33 and 29 to March 30th, 2018. And we read through that order uh, from Thomas Varlin a couple videos ago. The moving defendant suggests that the court set a new deadline for this purpose during the second half of May of 2018. Respectfully submitted, Francis Lloyd Jr. and a certificate of service. Okay, so the court has responded. And this is PACER document 158. This is the order for a second extension to file post-verdict motions. This is a May 7 deadline. So uh, obviously the second half of May uh, was denied. This is very interesting. Because we're looking at about 30 days from now. So we're looking at the end of April. And... And that's just to get the transcript. And I have a feeling this transcript is going to be very lengthy. And it's probably going to be, hmm. I'm guessing this transcript is going to be somewhere in the ballpark of a thousand pages. I'm guessing just by a couple hours being what, almost 80 to 100 pages. Uh, from the grand jury and the, the various different hearings that we've already had. All right. The criminal case, so this is the response. This is the order from Judge Farlin. This criminal case is before the court on defendant Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe's second motion for an extension of time to file post-verdict motions, document 157. 
The court previously granted both defendants an extension to March 30th, 2018 to file motions for judgment of acquittal and for a new trial under the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure 29 and 33, respectively, Document 152. Defendant Tucci Giraffe now requests an additional extension of time until the second half of May to file such motions. In support, Defendant Tucci Giraffe submits that due to an administrative error by her counsel, the transcript of the jury trial will not be available for at least 30 more days. Her counsel will then require further time to review the transcript and prepare post-verdict motions. Rule 45B1A authorizes the court to extend a deadline for good cause when a party requests the extension before the original deadline expires. Here, the court finds that good cause supports Defendant Tucci Giraffe's second request for an extension. The court therefore grants her motion for an extension, Document 157, however, in light of the court's duty to efficiently manage its docket, the court does not find an extension of time until late May to be necessary. Accordingly, both defendants shall have up to May 7, 2018, to file any post-verdict motions under Rules 29 and 33. No further extensions for filing post-verdict motions will be granted in this case, absent extraordinary circumstances. It is so ordered... Thomas A. Varlin. So who knows why there was such a delay to begin with. Heather filed for an extension because there was no transcript. She needed the transcript and there was going to be a delay. So the court grants a motion and I'm not sure what administrative error is being referenced. What what, what did Francis Lloyd do or not do that is causing an extra 30 days in the preparation of this transcript? Um, my understanding is that a transcript of court proceedings are always prepared after a court trial so that there's a written record, regardless of whether or not the defendant is going to request a copy of that. I don't know if that's correct. Maybe if there's anyone out there in the Lunacy family that can shed some light on this, uh, I, I just don't understand how anything that Francis Lloyd has done or failed to do has any impact on the generation of a verbatim transcript by the court reporter. Isn't there a separation there? Isn't that transcript going to be generated regardless? I, that's a question for, for everyone. So this was filed. We can see here on the 23rd of March, so three days ago. Now there's going to be an additional 30 day delay right here for at least 30 more days. So we're looking at April 23rd before it's even possible to have a transcript. And I'm guessing it's gonna be about a thousand pages long. So we've that gives about a week in April and a week in May to Read a thousand pages. Um, there, uh, there's not going to be any time at all, really, to have any corrections uh, made to any transcript to fix any omissions. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not quite sure how this is all going to play out. It. It feels to me that this delay in the transcript is really being used to put Heather and Randy in a very tight box as far as time and deadlines goes. Uh, to give them a deadline of May 7th and 
and not have that transcript in their hands. I, I'm surprised the transcript is not in my hands yet. I mean, we're looking at a sentencing hearing that's in June, and we're, we've, we've really departed from normal court procedure here. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but but there's definitely some things going on behind the scenes that, that I've just got no sense of right now. And if the phone call between Hat J and BZ is <laughs> has any light into some of the things that are going on behind the scenes, it, it sounds like people are really scrambling. I, especially in the jail. Uh, Heather's energy and... Uh, that's had an impact on that staff that is in that federal penitentiary. And, and they are making visible changes. And according to her, I, I'm not there. I'm, I haven't seen it. But that's a really interesting telephone conversation between BZ and Heather. You should all go to BZ's channel and check that out. I've listened to it about three times and I'm still blown away by what I'm hearing. So it looks like we're going to have to wait at least until the end of April before we got any transcripts. And then it looks like <clears throat> two weeks to read a thousand pages and write any motions that she needs to write. Of course, that's going to be with a golf pencil while they're under lockdown in this facility. Uh, oh, go listen to that conversation, guys. Wow. We're not sure where this Hat J journey is ultimately going to take us, but I'm going to take a little aside here. And just take a moment with Grace and ask her that she resolves this situation in the most peaceful, easy, happy, and joyful way that's possible. And that she connects as many souls with their freedom and their abundance that's divinely theirs. If you've got any emails for me, any love light or links, send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E -E, at protonmail.com. I love you guys a lot, and uh, we'll be back with more. <laughs> Very non-standard trip. Peace out.